Hi everyone, welcome to the channel. In today's video, we're going to be starting a fun beginner level character course on how to create this game ready character I'm calling the little monster. We will be doing all the modeling, texturing and animating in Blender. I'll be using version 2.90. And then at the end, we will port it all into the Unity game engine and do some simple setup to get it moving. Quick shout out to user TVDB who mentioned in the comments the Pokemon Gengar, which got me inspired to do this character. This will be a nine part series of videos. We will start slow today by just doing the rough block out of the character shape. Part 2, we will sculpt in some details. Part 3, we will retopologize for animation. Part 4, we will UV unwrap for texturing. Part 5, we will texture paint and bake. Part 6, we will build a custom rig. Part 7, we will do weight painting and shape keys. Part 8, we will animate. And in part 9, we will export to Unity to finally end up with something like this. Just as a heads up, these videos are a little bit more beginner focused and slower paced. So without further ado, let's get started. To start, I just want to go over some general settings, built-in Blender add-ons, and viewport configurations I have set up so you can follow along a little easier. So up to the Edit Preferences menu. First is under the Interface section. If you are in Blender 2.9 and want to have the scene stats visible to you in the bottom right corner, like the poly count, go to the Status Bar section here and tick the Scene Statistics box. Under the Editing section, I have Align to View enabled for new objects, which gives a little bit more control when creating new objects. Then onto the Add-on section, you'll see the list of pre-installed add-ons here. These are all already installed on your computer. You just have to enable them. Up to the search menu, I'm going to type extra to find the extra objects add-on. To enable it, just tick the little box here. This add-on gives you the rounded cube and single vertex options in the add object menu. I highly recommend this one. Next is the add-on called modifier tools. This gives you an apply all modifiers option, which can be very handy. I have some other ones enabled, but I will highlight them as we go along. If you have a laptop, under the input section, you may want to enable the emulate numpad option here. This makes switching orthographic views a little bit easier. That's it for now. Make sure to click the save preferences box whenever you see the little star so you don't lose your changes. Okay, onto the viewport. In the overlays, I have turned on the visibility of the 3D cursor and object origins. The 3D cursor shows where objects are spawning from and the origins show us where our mirror modifiers are mirroring over, as we'll touch on a little later in the video. Now for general viewport settings. Up in the viewport shading area, clicking here on this little arrow for the drop down menu, I'm going to select studio and then random down in the color section, which will give us the multicolored look when we're blocking out. This makes putting things together a little bit easier. And finally, up to the top right here in the layer panel filter menu, I have a few more restriction toggles turned on. I have select, hide, display, and render activated. These just make it easier to both change and see the status of our objects with respect to visibility and selectability. Okay, I think that's a good rundown for now. Let's get started with blocking out the rough shape of our character. So let's start with the body. You can see with my screencast keys here, I'm gonna press one on the numpad for front orthographic view in the sculpting tab, then shift A for the add object menu, then to mesh, and then to round cube, which is from the extra objects add-on we enabled earlier. Then I'm going to increase the radius to 1 and the arc divisions to 16, which will give us a good amount of control for us to shape the character's body. Okay, now S on the keyboard to scale up uniformly. You can see up in the top left corner the scale factor for each of the axes. If you hold control while scaling, it will incrementally scale in increments of 0.1. I'll scale until the factor in the top left goes to 10. Now I want to make his body a little bit more egg shaped. So I'm going to press S again to scale, but this time also press X to constrain the scale to just that axis as indicated by the red line that pops up. So I'll scale in a little bit, then three on the numpad for side orthographic view, and then S and Y to constrain the scale to the Y axis and squish it in a little bit. Now you should have a little bit of an oval egg shape. Now let's go up to the top left corner and switch from object mode to edit mode. You can also do this quicker by pressing tab on your keyboard to toggle between the two modes. One on the numpad, and then I'm gonna left click and box select the bottom half of the vertices like this. You'll notice though, as I orbit around, I've only selected the front half of the vertices and not the back half. To select them all a little easier, you can press Alt Z to toggle X-ray mode quickly. You can also press up here to toggle it as well. Now you'll notice when I box select the vertices and orbit around, I have them all selected. Okay. Okay, so with those vertices selected, you can press G on your keyboard to move them around. You can also press G and then X, Y, or Z to constrain to that axis like we did before for the scale. I'm going to press G and then Z to move them down a bit like this. A neat way to kind of squish things is to press S and then Z and scale the vertices down like this and flatten them out a bit. 
Numpad 7 for top orthographic view. Then Shift A again, and let's add in another round cube. This time, in the menu that pops up in the bottom left corner, let's click the Operator Preset button and select Capsule. Then S to scale it up a bit. It doesn't look too different from this view, but one on the numpad, and we can see that we have a nice, long pill shape. This will work nicely for the legs and arms. Let's press G to move it down and position it into place for the leg. With the leg still selected, let's press Shift D to duplicate the object and move it into place for an arm. You can rotate objects quickly by pressing R on your keyboard, S to scale it up a bit. Now I'm going to Shift D again to duplicate the arm, and with G and R, I'm going to move and rotate this new object to make what will be a big horn. Now let's make some fingers. I'm going to select the leg as it is still straight up and down and duplicate it with Shift D. Now let's tab into edit mode, Alt Z for X-ray and then left click and box select the top vertices. Now I'll press G and then Z to constrain the move straight downwards and shorten up this capsule a bit. S to scale, G to move and then R to rotate and let's make a thumb. Once you're happy with that, let's shift D a couple of times and make the other fingers. I'm going to go with three and position them around like this. Make sure to leave a little bit of space in between each finger. Okay, so that is a good base for our character's shape. Instead of manually duplicating the arms and legs over to the other side and most likely making our character uneven in the process, Blender has a mirror tool that allows us to perfectly flip an object over its origin point. To use this tool, we need to go to the modifier panel on the right here, then go to the add modifier menu and select mirror. Now nothing seems to have happened, and that's because the leg's origin point, as denoted by this small orange dot, is right in the middle. So the leg is effectively flipping over this origin point. If we want the leg to flip over to the other side of the body, we need it to flip over the middle point here, the blue Z axis line. So we can see by going to the object properties panel on the right here that the object's origin point is at these coordinates. To move it to the middle, you can press Control A and select location. This resets the object's origin point location coordinates to the middle of the viewport, and the leg has now flipped over to the other side, as you can see. So let's shift select the other objects here, go over to the modifier panel on the right, and add in a mirror modifier again. Nothing seems to have happened again. That's because our object's origin points are not in the middle of the body along the blue Z axis line. So let's press Control A and select location again. That didn't seem to work like it did for the leg. And that's because going over to the object data tab again, we can see this time the object's origin point has not only been moved, but also rotated. So let's press Control A again and select rotation this time. Now we can see with both the location and rotation coordinates of the origin point being set to zero, the horns flip over nicely to the other side of the body. Now you might be wondering how come the arm and fingers didn't flip over as well? That's because when you shift select multiple objects and you add a modifier or a material, it will only add it to the actively selected object, which will be the last one of the group you selected. To have the mirror modifier be added to the other shift selected objects, you can press Control L and select modifiers from the list, and it will link them all up automatically. You can also do this for materials and the other attributes in this list. Okay, let's add in a tail, shift A and adding in another round cube, capsule preset. S to scale, then numpad 3 for side view. And let's press G to move it into position, tab into edit mode, alt Z for x-ray, left click and box select the end vertices, then S and G to adjust accordingly. So I forgot to make a foot and toes earlier, so let's do that now. In object mode, selecting the leg here and Shift D to duplicate. You can see while I'm in object mode, when I press R to rotate, 
the leg rotates around its origin point, which because we did the control A option earlier, is now right in the middle of the viewport. If I tab into edit mode, however, press A to select all the vertices, and then press R to rotate, it rotates around a point in the center of its volume. This is kind of handy to know when moving and editing objects. Okay, Alt-Z for x-ray mode, box select the vertices on the end, and then G and Y to move them in a little, then G to position them as a sort of foot, then Shift D to duplicate, S to scale, and G to move to make a sort of big toe. R then Z to rotate it inwards a little bit. Then Shift D to duplicate. G then X to move it to the side a bit. And then R and Z to rotate outwards a bit. Okay, finally, let's make the horns a little bit more interesting by adding a little curve onto them with proportional editing. When I tab into edit mode and box select the vertices on the end, and then press R to rotate, you can see they don't really curve. The sides stay straight and it looks kind of weird. This is because there are simply no vertices there to bend. To add some vertices in quickly, you can press Ctrl R to add in a control loop. You can adjust the number of loops with the scroll wheel on your mouse. You can quickly select control loops by pressing Alt and left mouse button. You can add more control loops to your selection by pressing Shift, Alt, and left mouse button. You can also press Shift and just box select to add more vertices as well. So with the additional vertices we added with the control loops and the vertices on the end selected, let's press O on the keyboard to activate proportional editing. You can also press up here to activate it. Now when I press R to rotate, we have a gray circle that appears. You can adjust the size of the gray circle with the scroll wheel on your mouse. This gray circle, as you can see, is the area of influence of your rotation. Anything inside of this gray circle will also be affected by your rotation, albeit at a diminishing magnitude. And finally, you can also press S to taper the horn a bit as well and finalize the shape. And that's it for this video. Hopefully you have your little monster blocked out, something like this, and then we can call part one done. In the next video in part two, we will join all the separate objects together to make it one piece, and then we'll use the sculpting tools to add in some details. Quick shout out to the students of the Modeling and Simulation Classroom at Alonzo High in Tampa Bay, Florida, who are learning sculpting in Blender and are already producing amazing results. Great job, guys. I'm really looking forward to seeing more. Go Ravens. <sighs> Feel free to ask questions below. I try and answer all of them, and sometimes I know the answer. If you want to share your art or ask a question, I have a little group on Facebook going. Link is below. Or you can just hit me up on social media somewhere. I love seeing your guys' stuff. I have Twitter, Instagram, Discord, and Twitch as well. Anyways, thanks for watching, guys. I hope it helped, and see you in the next one.